is Joe from Scarecrow Joe Studio. Welcome back. This is part seven and the final segment of our paper mache troll tutorial. We have built a Viking troll. I hope you followed along. We're in the home stretch. We're going to paint, seal, and attach our separate elements. So let's get started by going over the tools and materials needed for this segment of the tutorial. All right, tools and materials needed for this final part of the troll tutorial are, of course, you're gonna need your paper mache troll that you've already built. You're gonna need your drinking horn, your little ax, and paint. You will need some black paint, and then whatever other colors of paint um, that you have in mind to paint your troll. I'm going to use mostly greens, yellows, browns, and then for the helmet I have a copper color and a silver color that I'm going to use. Um, I have white. This is a white primer. I'm going to use that for the dry brushing over the black. Um, you're going to need some masking tape to cover up your eyes with, especially if you're using the more humanistic eyes so that you don't get paint over those. And then of course you're gonna need some paint brushes, various sizes. And if you're going to create some clothing for him, uh, like I am, um, you'll either need some shop towels, um, not paper towels, but shop towels, or you can use cloth, um, like an old sheet or a t-shirt, that type of material. Uh, you're going to need some Loctite super glue or some kind of super glue to glue in these separate elements, the drinking horn and the axe. And then finally, after it's all painted and dry, you're going to need some polyurethane, get a clear satin, and you're going to spray that over the troll. And I think that's it. So let's get started on painting. All right, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my masking tape and I'm going to cover over his eyes because I don't want them to be painted. So this, the masking tape is going to protect the eyes from being painted. All right, first thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to base out this entire troll with black paint. Now, as you can see, I have a gallon of black latex paint. I use a lot of black paint in my art, so it's just more cost effective for me to buy a gallon of black latex paint as opposed to buying smaller, smaller bottles or containers of black paint. And I also, I do the same thing. I mostly do the same thing with white paint as well. So I'm just going to, I'm going to cover this entire thing. And I'm also going to paint my axe completely in black. And then after it dries, I'm going to go in and, I'll, and I'm going to dry brush white on the whole thing. Um, one thing that I didn't show in the last portion of the, uh, the last video is I went in after the axe blade uh, was completely dry and I sculpted over uh, the handle and after I sculpted it in and um, after I sculpted it in and smoothed it with paste I just took um, a pen tip of a pen and I made some kind of you know some texture lines in there sort of like a wood grain effect I don't know if you could see that but once this is uh, painted, <clears throat> you'll be able, and dry brushed, you're going to be able to see that texture even more. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and base out the entire axe um, and my troll with the black uh, latex paint. You can use acrylic paint. Um, if you have that, that's fine. Um, I do not suggest that you use any oil paint because it takes too long to dry. All right, I've got that based out. 
entirely in black and I'm going to sit it up here on my uh, little drying rack up there and I'm going to move on and basing out my troll completely in black. Um, I'm not going to worry so much about the horns because the horns are going to be completely white. Um, if I do get a little black paint on them, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So um, if you want your horns white, don't base them out in the black. And with these points of uh, texture in there, you'll have to use a dabbing motion to get that paint in all those little crevices. All right, so I have this all based out in black as well as my... Uh, axe here and I also painted the bottom of his feet black that's all that I'm gonna do for the bottom of his feet um, I didn't bother uh, basing out the horns in black because those are gonna be white and I didn't really bother or pay too much attention um, on the hands either especially the inside of the hands because that's not gonna matter either but the entire thing is now based out in black. So the next step, uh, I'm going to start with my axe here. I'm going to start with my axe, and um, I'm taking my white paint. Uh, this white paint happens to be just uh, primer, so that's what I'm using. I'm just using some primer. I'm going to start with my axe, and I have a uh, blue shop towel here. So I'm going to knock off a bunch of the paint and uh, I'm just gonna go in and this is dry brushing so you're not completely covering um, the piece white but you're going in and you're dry brushing and what dry brushing does is it brings out a lot of the texture that you put in there And I'll show you right now with the, uh, the axe handle. You can see that texture is really, you can see that texture is really coming out with the dry brush technique. All right, that's good. I'm going to do the same thing uh, with my troll here. Dip it into the paint, knock off um, most of it. And what I like to do on a piece like this is I'll start in the back. Um, in case I get too much paint on the brush, um, and it's not gonna it's not gonna matter so much on the back. But again, as you can see, as I'm dry brushing over this, you can see the texture coming out. Turn them over. I'm going to continue on from the back, but uh, I don't think you need to watch me uh, dry brush this entire thing. So I just want to hit the details here on the face so that you could see how this effect uh, brings out the texture. So it's bringing out the texture in the little eyebrows, the texture in the nose, uh, the texture in the cheeks here, the ears. So that's basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to dry brush white on this entire thing, including the helmet. All right, I finished up the dry brushing on the entire sculpture. So this is gonna, it brings out, a, a, again, a lot of the texture in there. Um, and areas that I really, really wanna highlight with my paint, um, I made sure that I dry brushed even more white paint over. So his eyebrow areas around his eyes, uh, his nose areas, his cheeks, uh, his little elbows there, and then, uh, his feet as well 
So from this point, um, it's, it's dry. I allowed it to dry uh, for about an hour. So what I'm gonna do is I have my little uh, plastic paint palette here. All of this paint in here is dry, so ignore that. Um, I'm gonna start out with some greens because I do want him to be green. So I have a few different colors here. I have a Christmas green a uh, spring green, and then I have a fresh foliage green. So uh, I think I'm gonna start with the darker green here. And again, um, I wanna start on the back just to see how it's gonna look. Um, and these paints that I'm using now are acrylic paint, so they'll dry pretty quickly. And because these, these paints are, are, you can thin them out as well with some water. Um, so it's not, it'll still bring out the texture. So you'll still see some of that darker, the, the black paint underneath. And the green paint or whatever colored paint that you're using. Um, the white is just going to pick that up. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm not going to paint his helmet green. But I'm going to paint his entire body green. For this first uh, darker layer of green paint that I'm using. So he is based out uh, over the dry brush with green, except for his helmet or his horns. Everything else is green. Uh, I'm going to set him aside to dry, and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to go ahead and start painting um, my axe, and I can also start painting my drinking horn as well. Um, for the axe, I'm just going to use a little brown for the handle. And then uh, when the handle is dry, I will go in and paint over the axe head, uh, maybe a grayish silver or something like that. Uh, you're going to see how much of this texture uh, you'll be able to see, again, um, using that dry brush technique of the white over the black. Uh, the color brown that I'm using for this is a nutmeg brown. There you go, and you can see how that texture just really pops with that uh, dry brush effect of white paint over the black. So I'm going to set this aside, use my little jar again, prop that up in there, and i got to wait for these to dry, and then I'm going to go in uh, with some lighter colored greens and hit some highlights put some highlights in him and then once that is dry um, I'll go ahead and start painting the helmet and the horns will be last. Right, I'm gonna go in now <clears throat> and the first thing that I'm gonna do with my drinking horn is I'm gonna cover this uh, entire thing inside and out with some white paint. Um, again I'm using a, a white um, this is a, a white paint that uh, has a primer base to it. Um, you don't have to use that. You can use a regular white paint. That's fine too. So I'm going to paint this whole thing white. Just to make it more of a brilliant white instead of this uh, clay colored, Sculpey clay colored white.
I'm going to have to do one section as at a time here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, set that aside to dry as well. Back to the troll painting. So he's, uh, he's completely dry. Acrylic paint, um, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, take very long to dry. There might be a couple of areas where it might be a little bit wet, but that's going to be fine. Um, I'm going to go in now, and I'm going to start highlighting some of these areas using my uh, lighter green colored paint here. And again, I'm going to start in the back, just so I uh, just so I could see um, how it's going to end up looking before I move on to the front. So just in the back of the head, I just want to and I'm I'm smearing it, smearing it a little bit with my fingers. Um, you can use paper towel or a rag to do that. This paint is uh, pretty thinned out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. I'm just going to lay over a bit of the lighter green over this darker green. Let's see how this looks here. cheeks around his eyes here maybe a little bit in here his ears I'm just kind of hitting just some highlights just putting some highlights in there really I'm not painting over like the entire thing I'm just adding some some highlights. And then his elbows here. I want those to kind of stand out a little bit more, so I'm going to hit those areas. Just adding some highlights, shoulder area here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to continue doing that. Um, tips of his fingers, his knuckles. So I'm going to continue doing that with this lighter green paint. Um, and if I feel like it's gotten too too heavy in certain areas, I'll wipe it off with uh, with my shop towel there, or you could use, again, you could use a rag. So over that dark green, I basically dry brushed a lighter green, um, just giving him some highlights, especially in his face area, his hands. So as you can see that, his head. And I want to bring out um, his features here and his face and uh, his ears. Hit some areas with some a yellow paint. Um, this paint is bright yellow. 
And I'm not going to use much for this. And I'm basically going to do the same, the same thing, only in smaller areas using just a little bit of the yellow paint. And again, I'm going to start in the back just so I could see how this is going to look. Um, I'll start, I'll start here. This ear area. Again, this is dry brush, so don't get a whole bunch of paint um, on your brush. You're just going in small areas just to highlight even further. Now I didn't pay too much attention to this area on his body. Um, the reason for that is because I'm going to create um, out of either shop towels or uh, cloth, like an old sheet or a t-shirt. Um, thin material is going to work best for you. But I'm going to create sort of like a, kind of like a, a, a loin cloth to go around this area. Um, and you're probably wondering, well, why didn't you, why didn't you do that first and then paint? Well, you have to paint it first. And when we get to the part where I actually create the cloth for him, you'll see exactly what I mean. But in the meantime, you're just going to have to trust me on this. And I'm going to just continue to go in, highlight some of these areas on his face in particular. The eyebrows here just dry brushing some yellow over that lighter green that we used that we painted highlighted over the darker green that we used cheeks so I'm just going to continue doing that tips of his ears highlighting those areas just a little bit dry brushing this bright yellow over that lighter green. I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, now, if you're using greens and, and yellows um, and you want these areas, these highlighted areas to be even brighter, let the paint dry um, and then go back and hit it again. Hit those areas that you want even brighter um, with that yellow paint. But um, this is going to be good um, because one of the uh, uh, when we when we're done completely with this thing, um, we're going to seal it with some polyurethane clear satin. Now I use this for two reasons um, on indoor uh, indoor props or sculptures. Um, I use it for two reasons. One is that spraying some of this on here. Uh, with the clear satin, it's really going to bring out the color. Um, right now, the color, it looks a little dull, but trust me, after you, you're done painting and you, you let it dry completely and then you spray this with the polyurethane clear satin, those colors are really going to pop and they're going to look even brighter. So, for instance, let me get my other troll here so that you can see the difference um, and how they and how both of these look. This one's much more dull. It's not clear coated with the the polyurethane satin, and this guy is. So his colors really pop. 
and I painted this guy that you just watched me do the same way that I painted this guy. The other reason is that, you know, over time these things, they get dusty. And um, if it has a clear coat of polyurethane, polyurethane over it, you can take a lightly damp rag and you can remove dust from it. Whereas if this was not sealed um, with the polyurethane, you couldn't do that because that way it would just rub the acrylic paint right off. So that, that's the two reasons why I, I like to use the polyurethane clear satin finish um, on the indoor props or indoor sculptures. Now, if this thing was going outside, um, this would also protect it from any kind of moisture. Um, so that's another another great uh, another great feature about the polyurethane. Um, it protects it and it makes the colors pop. We're gonna move on now to painting, finish painting the axe here. And I mean, you can paint your axe head any any color that you want. Obviously, um, I have this silver paint here. This is a uh, silver paint. Nothing special. Nothing expensive. But that's what I'm going to use to paint my axe head here. And I think I'm not going to like completely cover this thing with the silver paint. Um, I do want some of this this black and the white underneath to kind of come through. It just makes it look a little bit more used or rustic looking, in my opinion. But by all means, you know, it, it, it's your it's your piece, so you can completely cover it, make it look brand new and shiny, um, if that's what you prefer. But this is just the, the method that I like to use. So I'm just hitting it with some of the silver paint. But again, um, it's, it's, your, it's your preference, whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna set that aside to dry. And then the other thing, if you want, if you really wanted to make this more decorative, you can get a piece of twine like this, and you could kind of tie it around, you know, do do like the uh, crisscross pattern kind of thing like that to lend it a little bit more interest. If if that's what you wanted to do, um, I'll probably end up doing that. Okay, before uh, I move on to painting the helmet. There's one last little tidbit that I want to do here on this guy. Um, on his toes, um, I want to go in with just a little bit of brown paint. On his toes, his uh, tips of his toes there. And just kind of dab it, dab it in over that green. So that's going to give it a little bit more of a definition. And then I think I'm going to put a little bit of brown paint in his mouth area. I'm going to go ahead and move on to his helmet here. Um, I'm going to paint this two, two different colors. The helmet itself is going to be that silver color uh, that I painted the axe handle with. And these decorative uh, pieces of his helmet are going to be um, this bronze color that I have here. It's actually, well, it's copper. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to go ahead and start painting his helmet. And I, I do, I like this effect with the, uh, with the white dry brush paint over the black. Because again, just like with the axe head, 
makes it look a little bit more rustic. So that's one of the reasons why I, uh, I'm painting it this way. Um, you know, if you don't like that effect, by all means, paint your helmet white and then go over and paint it whatever color that you want so that that really stands out for you. It, it's whatever your preference is. This is this just happens to be my preference. All right, my helmet is painted. Um, I've got my decorative pieces in there with the copper color, silver helmet. Last thing I'm gonna do is paint my horns. Um, I'm just going to paint my horns white. You can, you know, if you wanted to add some more color to your horns, by all means do so. Um, and if you don't feel like your horns are smooth enough, you can take a fine, uh, fine grain uh, piece of sandpaper and sand them to get them even more smooth. Um, and also, if you wanted to add a little bit more color to your horns, um, you could add a little bit of a, maybe a darker yellow, a tiny bit to your white, and that will give it a, 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 a yellow tint to it if you wanted to do that. Or you could paint your horns black, I mean, what, whatever you want to do. But I'm going to go ahead and take the time to paint these horns white. All right, so right here are my three little teeth. And I painted them a golden sunset acrylic with a touch of white. Um, I didn't want him to have white teeth. I wanted them to look, uh, well, like troll teeth. Um, so that's the effect that I was going for. I think they're going to look like troll teeth with that coloration. Um, and now I'm just going to go ahead and move on. I've painted the other portion of the, of the horn white. And I'm going to go in with a small paintbrush. And um, I'm going to paint in some black. Now you can paint your horn, obviously, any color that you want. But I'm just taking, I'm just taking a little bit of black paint. And I'm just kind of giving it that kind of effect. I want some of the white to come through. Um, you can also use, you know, brown would work. Paint your horn any color that you want, obviously. A little bit on the inside here. And then again, I'm just going to wipe. That's basically my drinking horn. You can take as much time on that as you want, or as little time on it as you want. The other thing that I want to do with the drinking horn is I'm going to take some hot glue and I'm gonna squirt hot glue inside here and let it cool. And then it's gonna cool, it, it will cool obviously translucent. Then I'm gonna take some watered down brown paint and I'm gonna paint over the translucent hot glue. This will give it an effect of having a liquid um, inside the drinking horn.
But while I'm waiting for the drinking horn to dry and my teeth to dry, um, I'm going to go ahead and peel off the masking tape that I placed over the eyes here. And as you can see, I did get some of the paint in there, but that's not going to be a big deal. Um, because I can go in with a small, um, with an X-Acto knife or a razor blade or, you know, a box cutter or something like that. And just gently go in and scrape away the paint from his eyes. So I went in, cleaned up his eyes. And I did end up, uh, putting some of that twine around the axe handle there. Um, and I just kind of tacked it in with some a bit of hot glue. And then I went in with some hot glue, and it's still cooling. And I filled um, a bit of the drinking horn with some hot glue. After that cools, I'm going to go in with some, I think probably some of my copper paint and put some copper paint in there so that it looks like he has some uh, some beer or some grog um, in there ready to drink but um, I have decided that I'm actually going to attach these separate elements before I go ahead and seal this thing um, because they won't get into they won't get in the way of when I go and fabricate his loincloth. So that's what I'm going to do next with my super glue. I'm going to go ahead and attach these separate elements and as well as his teeth in there. And then once that's done, I'm going to take him outside and spray him completely with the polyurethane. Um, when you're spraying that stuff or any kind of spray paint, I'll use a well ventilated area. That's why I'm going to take the, this, this outside when I'm ready to do that. Um, I'm not going to show you me spraying this. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Just get, get a nice um, even coat on him uh, with the uh, clear satin. And then I would say let, this, let it dry um, overnight um, after you cover it with the clear satin. And then you'll be able to come back, or we're going to come back, and fabricate his, uh, his loincloth. Alright, so it's been 24 hours since I uh, sealed my troll with the polyurethane uh, clear satin. And now <clears throat> I'm at the point where I'm going to create a loincloth for my little troll guy. Um, now this is optional you don't have to do this but if you want to do this you will need a piece of cloth or you can use uh, shop towels those blue shop towels will work a pair of scissors some glue um, I happen to have wood glue you can use regular white glue you're gonna need some uh, cheap white flour a bucket You'll need a bucket of some sort to mix your your paste with and then I'm gonna experiment a little bit um, this is something I have not done before but I'm gonna put some brown paint into my paste so those are the items that you're going to need to create your loincloth if you're following along uh, with the, this section of the, the tutorial all right so first thing I want to do with this piece of cloth here is to kind of gauge so it's it's pretty thick it's too thick for what I want to do with him so I'm just folding down an edge of it I want to make sure that it will wrap all the way around and it does
but on this section here, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this so that it's more even because I had that wider section there. So that's going to be the top part. Actually, I might do it this way. So fold it this way like that to create kind of a, like a, you know, a belt or something, something like that. But on the bottom edge here, I kind of want to, I want to make some cuts into this, um, make it look a little more, uh, make it look jagged, you know, that kind of thing, put some cuts in it. And uh, just kind of want to see how that's going to look. All right, get these little pieces out of the way here. Cut a little bit more off over here so it's a little bit more even. Doesn't have to be perfect. He is a troll. Kind of folding over again. Yeah, something like that. Where it's going to go all the way around like that in the back of them. And uh, let me just trim off. In the back, I'm just going to trim off some pieces here make it look a little bit more jagged all right that's gonna work okay so for for my uh paste here that i'm creating this mixture here <clears throat> this is what i'm going to dip my loincloth into so that it will stick onto my uh, troll body. So I've already mixed up, the, all this is right here is flour and water mixed to a thin pancake batter consistency. And I'm gonna add a little bit of wood glue in here. The reason that I'm adding the wood glue is because I want the, uh, the fabric, once it's dry, to harden. And the wood glue will help will help that process along. Um, now, if you don't have the wood glue, again, white glue will do the same. It's just a little, an, an added uh, an added adhesive, if you would. So, like I said, I've never done this before. I've never tried to add color to paste or anything like that. But I'm gonna add. Some brown acrylic paint to this. In the hopes that when my loincloth dries, it will dry a brown color. And if it does, then I won't have to go in and try to... I won't have to go in and try to... Um, paint that loincloth after it's dried onto the body. Now, if you're using uh, brown shop towels, or I'm sorry, blue shop, if you're using blue shop towels, uh, I do not know if um, you'll have to go back and repaint it, even if you do add brown or whatever color paint to your paste because the shop towel, the shop towels are this blue color. So you may have to. So I do recommend maybe using white cloth for that. All right, you will need some, a rag or some shop towels because once we dip that loincloth into this uh, paint mixture here, paste and paint mixture, and apply it to him, it's going to drip on certain areas, but because we sprayed this with the polyurethane first, it should be easy to just simply wipe it off and the paint will not adhere so much to this polyurethane. 
that's the plan. So here I go. I'm going to take my uh, my loin cloth here, and I'm going to dip it. I'm going to dip it into my uh, brown paste mixture. I'm going to make sure make sure you're getting it completely saturated so that there's no no white parts showing on your sheet or no blue parts showing on your shop towels if that's what you're using. This is messy, this is goopy. All right, it, it, it's a mess. So basically I'm just kind of, I saturated it to make sure that I got a good enough amount on there. And I'm just kind of using my, my fingers to squeegee it out so it's not so not so goopy. All right, we'll get this out of the way here. Time to apply. So I'm gonna spread out my, uh, my goopy little loin, loin cloth that I've cut. Spreading it out, and then I want. I'm going to go ahead and make my fold. And it should stick really nicely. Let's do one more. I'm going to start in the front. where the uh, towel comes in I'm looking at it in the back here so I've got his little loincloth on him now if you wanted to cut this is your opportunity right now to make any final cuts into your lo loin cloth. You can make them a little bit shorter. That's what I'm going to do. But uh, do it now while it's still while it's still wet. Cuz once it dries, it's going to harden. And then you won't be able to uh, easily cut through that or make any trims on it. All right, something like that. So basically, there, there you have it, right there. Now when this dries, it'll dry, it'll harden, but it should be still a little bit pliable, but it will harden and it will stick and stay on there. Um, the other thing that you wanna do is if you have it, and this is too goopy, and you've gotten some paint on uh, areas of your troll that you don't want them to be, take your shop towel, and go in there and wipe that stuff off before it dries. There you have it. Makeshift Viking Troll Loincloth. You know, I'm kinda, just kinda looking at this and I feel like maybe he needs some kind of strap or something um, that 
kind of indicates that he has something holding up his uh, his loincloth. So I kind of like that. So what I've done is I took the very edge where you have a you have that seam stitched in to, into a a sheet, um, and I cut that off because that's a nice thick piece of material, and I'm just going to trim trim some of these edges though. And I want to kind of measure my placement. So it's going to go like around his shoulder. Trim these off. Around his shoulder and kind of tack back here. Um, but that's too much material, so I'm just going to cut that right there. And then dip this into my brown mixture here. Make sure I get it nice and saturated. And I'm going to take that and apply it. like that and I'm pressing down on uh, where the fabric is onto the body of my troll make sure it's gonna stick yeah I like that lends it a little bit more interest but anyway guys there it is that's how to create a very simple cloth uh, loincloth using an old white sheet. That's what I used. Of course, you could do the same thing with blue shop towels. That'll work too. But this guy is done. Um, because it's tinted brown, um, I will not have to go back and try to paint this while it's on its body and, and dry and hardened. So he's good to go. He is finished. I'm gonna allow him to dry um, probably 24 hours and then I'll take them back outside and with the polyurethane clear coat, I'm going to spray them again. And especially his loincloth and the cloth that I, uh, the strap here, the cloth that I applied to him. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. This is a wrap for the paper mache troll tutorial where we built a Viking troll from paper mache and added some other elements to it with polymer clay. Um, he is completely done. He's dry, uh, sprayed again with the polyurethane. But if you have followed along from start to finish, hopefully you have built your own Viking troll or some other theme troll. Um, Cause you can use these techniques and also the tools and materials to create any kind of little fantasy figure like this, um, any themed figure. It doesn't have to be a Viking troll, obviously. But I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I enjoyed filming it and making it for you. Um, and I hope, uh, I hope you learned something from it. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. We have more tutorials coming up. And until then, take care, and we'll catch you in the next one.